So today I'm just going to go through some questions that had popped up in the feed and give a little feedback here. Why do some people repeatedly get into relationships where they are being rescued? What's behind that? So oftentimes when we struggle with insecure attachment, we have a habit of trying to rescue our partners. And I will add that this, this goes for partners who are rolling stones, what I refer to as avoidant, um, avoidantly attached individuals, and partners who are anxious open hearts. The way they approach the rescuer role might be a little bit different, but there is an underlying dynamic which is essentially the same, and that is when you try to rescue someone, it's because you're trying to rescue the parts of yourself that you have projected into them. And oftentimes, you will allow for them to do things that you would never allow for within yourself, that you would never do yourself. So what's the flip side of that? Often when you are always being rescued, on the other side of it, there are aspects of yourself that you haven't allowed to step into a state of mastery, to be able to rescue oneself. So there's a deep sense of helplessness or incompetency or a lack of sense of agency. And so you find partners who embody perhaps the other end of that extreme, which is a tremendous amount of agency or of compassion or of um, being able to get things done, right? Solve the problem. And of course, individuals with insecure attachment are really good problem solvers because they spend a lot of time in their heads intellectualizing, rationalizing, um, mechanizing, uh, you know, I think I, did I say analyzing, you know, trying to predict the outcome before they even step into um, a conflictual situation because they want to know the outcome because they're so afraid that the outcome is going to lead to rejection or abandonment. So they've kind of already gone through the whole conversation in their head before they even decide to have it. And that's often true of both um, Rolling Stones and Open Hearts. What's actually coming to mind visually speaking, there's a, a lecture given by um, Esther Hicks. If you're not familiar, she she's a channel. I think of her as a channel. Um, and she talks a lot about law of attraction, law of allowance. And so she talks about how she, Esther, saw in, in a bathroom, in a women's bathroom, um, while she was traveling, a mother and a daughter. And a daughter had gotten locked inside the bathroom stall and she couldn't figure out a way to unlock it so she could get out. So the mother gets down on her belly and scooches her way into the small bathroom stall in order to help the daughter unlock it and get herself out. And so the first thing Esther thought was, wow, that mother deserves like a mother of the year award. And then the second thing she thought was, wouldn't it have been easier for the daughter, the small daughter to get down on her belly and crawl out of the bathroom stall? <laughs> what a wonderful picture and metaphor for how that need for being rescued is generated. And maybe if you could take that image and or that metaphor and apply it to your relationships, if you are a rescuer, how many times have you gotten down on your belly to try to help somebody out of their situation when it might have just been easier and more effective for them to find their own way out, right? And equally, if you are the, the one that's often being rescued, how often have you just wanted the ability to make your own way out of a circumstance but questioned and doubted yourself and so you accepted help and you accepted um, some kind of maybe over generosity because you wanted the result so bad and you didn't trust yourself well enough to make it happen for yourself. And so you get the result and there's some satisfaction in that, but you're sort of left with this itchy doubt about how capable you really are. And then that just fuels this fear of failure and then you start having this thread of perfectionism and now all of a sudden you're too afraid to try anything because to try and fail is worse than not trying at all, right? Because that's gonna prove something even worse about your character. So you tend to be attracted to partners who allow you to avoid ever having to encounter that anxiety provoking circumstance, right? So this is kind of like, particularly for open hearts, when they, when they get into relationships and they give and give and give and give and give, um, and, they're, and they are pleasing, they're people pleasing, trying to sort of think ahead, figure out, analyze, mechanize, what's my partner gonna want and need in order for me to be integral to their experience, right? How am I gonna make myself essential to their experience so they don't abandon and or leave me? So then you kind of demonstrate yourself to be somewhat of a rescuer and you cushion your partners from experiencing any anxiety themselves. Intentionally, you're intending for it to be a generosity. 
you are looking for that sense of deep connection, you are wanting to prove to them that you are worthy of their love, that you will fight for them, that that you will always be there for them. And it's because that's what you are really desperately wanting yourself. But the reverse is what the other is usually wanting, particularly if they're someone who feels like they are being rescued a lot, is a challenge. They're looking for something to, a circumstance in which to prove themselves on an unconscious level. Sometimes on the conscious level, they'll be like, oh, well, this person's willing to pick up the slack, so I might as well just hang out with them because I don't really have to do too much. And that's not gonna force me to experience that, that conflict and anxiety that forces me to challenge my own beliefs about myself and my sense of agency. But this is the thing, when you struggle with a sense of agency and when you struggle with fears of failure, for example, and when you struggle with this idea that you may not be worthy or good enough, then what you are on a soul level, or let's say an unconscious level, really desiring is an opportunity to prove yourself wrong, to prove your ego wrong, right? So that is why you will be persistently attracted to people who, quote unquote, are a challenge. And, and really, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about in our previous question, about that experience of allowing people to have their challenges allowing people to have their challenges and to experience their own conflict because that is part of their growth process. And it's also part of your growth process, right? Not only experiencing that anxiety or conflict, but allowing them to have it and allowing yourself to have it. 